All right, you guys, let's go ahead and get started with today's reading intervention. Woo! It's the last one, so I hope you guys are ready for summer. All right, let's go. So let's go ahead and get started with the academic vocabulary that we've already identified. All right, so elegant means well-mannered and refined. Sheer is simple and uh, absolute, uh, absolute. Astonishment is surprise or shock. Bound is to jump or leap. Merit, worthy, even superior, effort. And reflected, thought out, thought about thoroughly, contemplated. Let's get started with our reading. So again, this is just like we saw the other day. We still have all of our notes and everything that we've learned on our reading. But before we get started reading, I want us to take a picture, to take a look at this picture. All right, I think it's a little bit important to start off looking at this picture first. So my first question is, look at the illustration on the front of the, the front of the page. How does the illustration help you understand the text? And is there anything missing from the illustration that, that was mentioned in the text? Parents, please pause this video to give your child time to answer this question. All right, you guys, so let's go ahead and look at the first question first. Uh, how does this illustration help you understand the text? Well, this helps me to understand the text because as I'm looking at this picture, I see a frog in the lap of the princess. Um, I see the king, I see a dog, and I see a guy looking on his lap. I don't see the flea, and I also don't see the grasshopper. Um, I feel like at the beginning where it talked about the people watch, which was the crowd that we said, um, and the the flea bowed to the people. Um, I'm not really seeing that crowd that was there. Um, I do see two onlookers, but maybe they're referring to the crowd as the three people who are in the picture. Um, but let's move on to the second one. I'm pretty sure that you were able to find some other things as well. Um, is there anything missing from this illustration that is in the text? Well, I just talked about that. Um, <laughs> so I answered both questions kind of at the same time. Um, but it also helps because you kind of get to see the colors and what they're wearing. All right, you guys, so let's go ahead and get started with the reading. Hans Christian Andersen is a beloved, a beloved Danish fairy tale author who lived in the 1800s. In this tale, a flea, a grasshopper, and a frog have a completion, a competition to see who can leap the highest. The Leaping Contest, adapted from the story by Hans Christian Andersen. The flea, the grasshopper, and the frog wanted to see which of them could jump the highest. They held a contest and invited everyone to come and see the grand sight. The king heard about the contest and declared, My daughter will marry the highest jumper. The flea was the first to come forward. He had the best manners and bowed to the people who had gathered to watch the contest. He was from an important flea family. He had spent lots of time around people, so the flea knew how to behave. Next came the grasshopper. He was not quite as elegant as the flea, but he knew perfectly well how to behave. The grasshopper wore a green uniform. He wore the green uniform he had worn since birth. He said that it came from a very ancient Egyptian family, and he had always been admired for that. In fact, the grasshopper had been brought in from the fields. He now lived in a house built for him that was made entirely out of playing cards. I'm, I sing so well, 
he said that sixteen crickets who have chirped their whole lives have made themselves thinner than before from sheer jealousy over my great house you see no one has ever built the crickets a house made of cards to live in so we're going to take a pause here and i have got a question for you so describe the two contestants um and how are they similar also how are they different parent parents please pause the video here to uh give your child time to answer that question and then once they have answered it you can resume the video so some of the things that i noticed about the grasshopper and that and about the flea is that they are bragging about who they are and where they come from um the the flea talked about um how he was from an important flea family um and then the grasshopper came forward and the grasshopper in my opinion bragged the most of all uh talking about his singing and um where he had come from to the green color that he wore and about the house that he lived in um how they are the, how they are the same um they both have wings and they are both insects um and those are two of the things that i, I could get that are the same about the flea and the grasshopper Oh, and, you know, they both kind of have some sort of standing already in, um, I guess, their society. All right, let's keep moving. We'll keep reading. The flea and the grasshopper showed their high opinions of themselves, each thinking himself quite an equal match for the princess. The frog said nothing but seem to be in deep thought. And now let's pause here, because now we've already kind of talked about the flea and the grasshopper. And so now I want to compare, how the, I want you to compare how the flea and the grasshopper, how are they the same and different from the frog? Parents, please pause the video to give your child time to answer this question. So, the frog didn't really say much um the frog was very quiet and um was it was thinking while the flea and the grasshopper they um were you know talking and going on and on about the qualities that they had um one way that you can tell uh well, one thing that is kind of the same about the grasshopper and the frog um most likely they're both green and so that is um one thing that we can have that's the same for both of them all right let's keep reading the king watched carefully and was quietly forming his own opinion about um the three contestants now i know i just asked you a question but i've got another one for you because remember we're doing a deep dive and really dissecting and understanding this reading the second time the question is what does the king do that makes the reader realize that this isn't just a leaping contest parents please pause the video to give your child time to discuss So the king watches the contestants closely to form an opinion about them. That tells that tells us that the contest is not just about which contestant can jump the highest, right? Because if you're just looking to see who's jumping the highest, you're not forming super strong opinions about their character just from, you know, watching them and talking to them. You're just going to see who jumps and then go from there um it also is about who can impress the king with his personality his cleverness and the behavior let's keep reading 
And now the match began. The flea jumped so high that no one could see what had become of him. So everyone insisted that he had not jumped at all, which was disgraceful after all the fuss he had made. The grasshopper jumped only half as high and leaped into the face of the king, who was disgusted by his rudeness. The frog stood for a long time, as if lost in thought. People began to think he would not jump at all. When, to everyone's astonishment, the frog suddenly jumped sideways. He landed right in the lap of the princess, who sat on a little golden stool nearby. So, I've got a question for you. How does the, well, not how, um, what does the frog do when it's his turn to jump? And how does this differ from the grasshopper and the flea? Parents, please pause this video to give your child time to answer this question. So what the frog does is the frog jumps on the princess uh, in her lap. And the flea, you know, he just, he's like, I'm going to jump as high as I can, you know, straight up into the sky. Um, and he took the test, the, the contest quite literally. And the grasshopper jumped and landed on the king's face. Um, and that kind of made the king upset. Uh, he was disgusted. He, it says that he, that he was disgusted by the rudeness that was shown. And so while both the flea and the grasshopper, their goal is literally to get the highest height. Um, the frog chose to jump into the lap of the princess. Now let's keep reading. There is nothing higher than my daughter, said the king. Therefore, to bound into her lap is the highest jump that can be made. Only one is only one who is quite clever would ever have thought of that. Thus, the frog has shown that not only is he a fine jumper, but he has a good sense as well. He has brains in his head that he has. And so the frog won the contest. I really jumped the highest, said the flea. But it's all the same to me. The princess may have self may have the stiff legged slimy creature if she likes. The dull and heavy frog has won the day. I am too light and airy for this foolish world. Merit seldom meets its reward. The grasshopper sat on the green bank and also reflected on the word on the world and its ways he too said yes a crooked cro a croak a croaking creature has won the day not i with my clear and ringing notes and then the grasshopper began to sing in his own peculiar way it is from his song it is from his song that we have taken his little piece of history this little piece of history, which may have, which may very possibly be all untrue, although it does stand printed here in black and white. So let's pause. How does the flea and the grasshopper hide their disappointment when the frog wins? What do they say after they lose the contest? Parents, please pause the video to give your child time to answer this question. The flea and the grasshopper both continue to brag about themselves, and they also insult the frog. The flea says that the frog is stiff-legged, slimy creature. The grasshopper calls the frog a croaking creature. It sounds to me like the flea and the grasshopper are sore losers. And we all know it's not important, it's not good to be a sore loser. And it's also not good to call names just because you lost. Let's go ahead and keep reading. The frog and the princess were an odd match, 
but a good one. And they lived happily together for the rest of their lives. The end. Now it's time for, oh, it's not moving. Let's see if we can get this working. Oh, there we go. Now it's time for write about reading. All right, and you actually have to write real words, not like just, you know, what Goofy's doing over there and scribble scrabble. So, write about reading. Pretend you are either the frog or the princess and retell the fairy tale from that character's point of view. So, essentially what you have to do in this in this assignment is you get to be the frog or the princess, whoever you choose. And then you have to tell the story through their eyes or their point of view. All right, what do you think the frog was thinking the entire time? What do you think the princess was thinking as all of this was happening? You get to put it down on paper and you can be as creative as you want to be, but you still have to follow the guidelines of the story. All right, you guys, that's all I have for you. Bye.